Have you ever written a piece of code that you thought was absolutely legendary only to have someone come along and read it and tell you that it sucked? This happens to a lot of new developers because in the early days they tend to focus on language and framework specifics rather than becoming aware of what bad practices they should be avoiding. So in this video I'm going to be going through the three symptoms of bad code and I'm going to be giving you some actionable tips that you can use to steer clear of writing bad code yourself. But before we get into the bad code let's first decide on what good code is. Most new developers confuse correctness of code with good code. Now by correctness I mean does the code Code work properly? Does it do what it was intended to do? So if good code is just code that is correct, surely that means that bad code is just code that doesn't work properly, right? Not quite. This is where a lot of new developers fall short. They often don't realize that code can do what it's supposed to do, but still be awful code. So if we're not just talking about correctness, what does make code bad? Let's look at the three symptoms. First off is readability. Now this means how easy it is for someone to read your code, even your future you. The name of a variable should clearly convey its purpose. The same goes for variables and classes. The moment you have a name that conveys its purpose poorly or just flat out wrongly, that is where your code starts becoming unreadable. Anyone looking at your code should be able to discern the purpose of your code just by reading the name of that function. A lot of the confusion stems from the fact that most developers seem reluctant to write very long names. You don't particularly have to write long names for your classes, just make sure that the name is descriptive enough to fully express the purpose of that item. Then the next thing that's going to affect the readability of your code is inconsistent formatting. If you're going to use a mixture of indentation styles, spacing, and inconsistent casing, you're going to confuse your reader. Most teams will have a consistent standard so that everyone on the team can follow the same formatting. If this is something you're particularly bad at, it's quite easy to automate this, either with setting your IDE to follow those standards, or you can set up some sort of GitHub workflow action that will ensure the consistent formatting of the code whenever it's submitted. Using magic numbers and strings in your code is also likely to confuse the reader. It's it's way easier to declare that value as a constant or a variable and then use that variable throughout your code base so that its name can be a clear indication of what that value is for. This then brings us to writing comments for your code. So many developers think that heavily commenting their code will make it more understandable. Yes it will for a while. It's only a matter of time before someone will come back in and change the code but won't bother to update the comments. When you end up in that situation your reader will end up not being sure if the comments are correct or if the code is correct. If they believe the comments then it means the code probably doesn't work properly. If they believe the code then you're just confusing them by having the comments there. Rather just leave the comments out completely. In most scenarios if you have a descriptive of enough name you can avoid writing the comments. If you do want to write comments, write comments about why the code was written, not what the code does. So that brings us to our second symptom of bad code and that's maintainability. This is how easily our code can be updated, extended or fixed over time. Code that is difficult to maintain is usually called by writing code in very large functions with overly complex logic. What you really want to do to solve this is to try and break up functions into smaller pieces. Try and simplify some of the more complex logic by writing helper methods. Stick a piece of complicated code into a small health helper method and call that. Code duplication is another thing that causes maintainability issues. If you end up having the same functionality or the same logic in multiple different places, Whenever you need to make a change, you need to make that change in so many different places. The more code that exists in the code base, the more chances are that something is going to go wrong. The correct approach to this is rather to extract that functionality into a common method and then call that method in wherever you need that functionality. Code that is tightly coupled tends to be very difficult to maintain. Tight coupling generally just means that a class is very heavily dependent on another class. If you've ever had that sinking feature feeling when you've been told to make a change to a class and you think to yourself, mm, if I change this, I know I'm going to have to change this class and this class and this class. That is a sure sign that your code is too dependent on the other classes. And then our third symptom of bad code is functionality issues. This is code that is written that ends up leading to unexpected behavior 
or if it does what it's supposed to, but does that in a super inefficient way. Ends up hogging all resources or not releasing resources when it's supposed to. Poor error handling is another sign of this where exceptions aren't handled gracefully or exceptions are just swallowed without logging any information about those exceptions. And then hard coding configuration details directly in the code also limits functionality. These really should be external resources or external files that are referenced from the code. So while these are bad code examples that you should avoid, we should all strive to write better, cleaner code. So you should watch this video next where I go through some of the principles that you need to know in order to write good, clean code. Thanks for watching. I'll see you over there.